This is Dr. Robert Elder. I'm a pediatric and adult congenital specialist at the Yale University School of Medicine. I'm going to speak to you about transposition of the great arteries. So transposition of the great arteries, also commonly referred to as DTGA, is the second most common cause of cyanotic heart disease after tetralogy of flow. In this lesion, the aorta arises anteriorly and rightward, hence the letter D, which refers to the aortic position relative to the pulmonary artery and comes off of the morphologic right ventricle, and the pulmonary artery arises posteriorly from the left ventricle. You can also think of this as atrioventricular concordance and ventriculoarterial discordance. Blue deoxygenated blood passes from the systemic veins to the right atrium and right ventricle and returns to the body. Red oxygen-rich blood returns from the lungs via the pulmonary veins to the left atrium, left ventricle, and then is pumped back to the lungs. Instead of a circulation in series, transposition is essentially two series in parallel. Without mixing or intervention, this is not compatible with life. Detransposition results from abnormal development early in fetal life, which is thought to be related to abnormal growth and development of the bilateral subarterial conus from early cardiogenesis though really the precise mechanism is not well understood. The growing fetus, which already lives at a low oxygen tension, is not markedly affected, although there is some growing literature about late neurocognitive dysfunction in these patients. At birth, infants with detransposition of the great arteries are generally quite cyanotic, but do not have other signs of pulmonary disease. They tend to be well-grown and without other syndromic associations. The chest x-ray is classically described as a, quote, egg on a string, end quote, and refers to the fact that the two great arteries are in parallel, thus the mediastinum above the heart appears somewhat narrowed relative to a normal heart. The degree of oxygen saturation or desaturation is related to the degree of mixing. More mixing equals a higher oxygen saturation. Mixing can really occur at three potential places. Number one, the PDA. In many cases, we can maintain the patency of this at birth with prostaglandin infusion, though this is not really the best place to allow for mixing. Number two, ventricular septal defect. About 40 to 50% of patients with detransposition are born with a VSD. These infants tend to have better mixing and higher oxygen saturations, but their repair and long-term outcomes are more complicated compared to those that don't have a VSD. And number three is an atrial communication. Virtually all infants have some atrial communication, for example, a foramen ovale. A widely open atrial septum is the best place for mixing. Placing these infants on oxygen, the so-called hyperoxia test, does not make a significant difference given that the cyanosis is from lack of mixing, not from a pulmonary disease process. Immediately at the bedside, in cases of severe cyanosis and poor mixing, in the modern era, the pediatric cardiologist can intervene with a balloon atrial septostomy, also known as the Rashkin procedure. This tears a hole in the atrial septum and allows immediate improvement in the oxygen saturations and better mixing of blood. The long-term management of this lesion includes surgical repair. In the modern era, starting since the late 1980s to early 1990s, this has been an arterial switch operation, usually done in the first week of life. These patients need to be followed lifelong for issues including coronary artery stenosis related to switch and manipulation of the coronaries, neoaortic valve disease, pulmonary stenosis, and other long-term issues.